What a day! What a day! What a day! Voice with crowd, fear and delight. <laughs> What's wrong with a bit of fear and delight? Time to see your way. Time to be packing, moving on. I can see you now. Allow me to introduce myself. Scammers Jones, Esquire Clown. English. Indulge me by your attentiveness, me mates, or I must prevail upon ye to witness me lost and complete unmasking. That will thrill and revolt you with fear and delight. Sometimes a person makes a disguise to hide himself. It is inevitable that he must reveal his true identity. Watch as a man steps away from the circus ring, peels away his disguises, and reveals the joys, brutalities, and tragedies that shape the white clown mask of Scaramouche Jones by Justin Butcher. I was pale, even at birth. Which surprised me, mother, since she was a dark-skinned gypsy. <laughs> you were so fair than white when you bulked up from inside me, Splunk. Just like a little shellfish. Who was me father? Oh, can say. Me mother never told me, except that he was an Englishman. And so, we traveled together for nearly 24 years as I grew to manhood. When we stayed to our pitch at a public place, my job was to carry out the elaborate rigmarole, which proceeded the actual snake charming as a way to generate an appropriately mystical build-up to the performance. <clears throat> a vicious pear and paste made from mixing goat's milk with white clay was plastered all over our faces as a ceremonial protection against evil spirits. We were arrested and we were slung into a dungeon to await sentencing. Me rescue came at the hands of Rear Admiral Prince Eugene of Italy, who thought it is a shame to see a poor, innocent young man suffer the same fate as poor Yasu. And so, I departed Africa. Me time among the gypsies was a seamless roving journey without beginning or end. They were heading for Milan and I followed. And so I found myself at the police station in Milan. The desk sergeant leered at me. Take this white-faced leak down to the cellars and teach me a lesson. I was stripped of me foinery and I was beaten senseless with a rifle butt and knuckle dusters. The brutality of our mistreatment was taken as a sign that things were, uh, not too hot for gypsies in Milan. So we set off on the long journey to Clockwork. The day that Poland fell, <sighs> disguised as a monk, with no clear intent but to support, 
Why give me snow white face under me kale for fear it should excite comment? Why was prevented <clears throat> from boarding a ship bound for Egypt and was instead slung to the back of a military wagon crewed with men, women, and children who all bore on their garments a yellow star. The Nazi doctors could find nothing in their books of eugenic anthropology to account for the pristine witness of me face. So they kept me alive as a curiosity that would bear further looking into. Or I was given the job as a grave digger at the concentration camp at Skeet. stand by and watch as trailer loads of dead bodies pour up and into them huge droves of living victims were then herded to the edge of the pits where they were machine guns into the ground. However, uh, uh, when the corpse has arrived, uh, whether by gas, bullet, or malnutrition, uh, uh, me rope was a shovel, white lime, uh, all over their contorted limbs uh, and twisted faces. Uh. And an extraordinary thing happened. Or I discovered a facility for making children laugh. Yes, when those ranks of frightened, worn down people would wind up in machine gun squads, or I would wink at them, pull faces, cavorting, making fun of the guards behind their backs, acting out a silent, Pantomime. Oh, I got caught from around this way plenty of times, and the punishments were far from pleasant, but seemed to be a price worth paying to see those haunted little faces fixed on mine as they waited for the end. And so the common euphemism for extermination on camp became not going to the showers or going for a haircut, but going to see the clown. After the war, I was locked up, not surprisingly, for complicity in war crimes. My reprieve, however, came in 1951, when my case was re-examined in light of some of the stories the survivors were beginning to tell. Was I really the concentration camp clown who kept fear at bay for so many Holocaust victims? I muttered that yes, or I just wanted to make the little ones laugh before they order. Order! It would seem that, in your own way, you have been some service to humanity, you have been wrongfully imprisoned, and you shall receive a compensation of a hundred pounds, and you are free to go within His Majesty's realms. And so, 
to my ignorance, I acquired a brand new suit of clothes, a hundred pounds in my pocket, and a ticket by rail all the way to England. <clears throat> Where should I start? 